Hi everyone, I got a reasonably good rea uh, reaction from my first Darktable video, so uh, I figured I'd go ahead and do a second video for you guys. Uh, this video will be a specific edit, um, as I was talking about at the end of the last video. Um, the feedback that I had on the first video actually asked for some more in-depth uh, information about how to use the light table, but I might save that for a uh, separate video later um, because you know there's a lot here it's actually been covered by uh, a few of the other videos that I mentioned in the in the, uh, my last screencast as well so uh, I will go ahead and do that but this time we're going to do a specific edit and I thought for my first specific edit I might do this one here which is a semi macro shot it's a uh, it's a shot that I I took whilst walking just around Oxford um, in the middle of uh, Warnford Meadow and it's taken with a 24 to 105 f4 as you can see here uh, on my 5D Mark III. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to show you my workflow from beginning to end how I would normally come back from you know my shoot or whatever and I bring in my files well I'm not going to show you that basically I copy my files off using a, a memory card reader I put that into um, my directory structure as I showed you previously and then I just import the files into dark table so I'll do that now um, so this is my demo folder but I'm gonna actually go and bring up the directory as it was when I uh, downloaded it off the camera okay so we go into the import module we click on folder uh, we bring up uh, the dark ta table demo folder that we had open before. So I'm just going to go back into here. As I showed you before, I put all my photos into a photos directory with the date followed by uh, what it what it is. Uh, so this was about a week ago in walking around Oxford. So this is the directory that we've got. So I'm going to import this into a new film roll. So here are all the photos that I took as I was wandering around Oxford. You can see that uh, I started off in the town and took a photo of the new Islamic Centre and walked through uh, some parks and so forth. I thought this uh, post box was cool and South Park here with a, with a view of Oxford, sort of more typical view of Oxford. Let's... Those are the spires of Oxford as you can see with the lovely transmission lines in the background and that I wandered up to work and then after work wandered back through Wandford Meadow and took the shots of you just happened to see a uh, a butterfly land on some flowers and some you know these these cool flowers and stuff and then bumped into some kids and took some photos of them actually they took these photos I gave them my camera hoping they wouldn't drop it on the ground and let them take some shots but anyway Let's go and have a look at these. So what I would normally do, typically, is I'd bring these in, look at them in the light table, probably, you know, zoom in on them, run through them. I'm using the mouse wheel to, to skip ahead through, you know, mouse wheel down goes to the next image, mouse wheel up goes to the previous image. You can press Z if you want to press and hold Z if you want to see the full um, version. Keep in mind that by default, Darktable shows you the embedded JPEG that the camera takes. So I'm not actually looking at the raw file here. In fact, you'll notice if you open up uh, some of these files, especially things like this, which are sort of a bit overexposed and so forth. Let's open that up in the Darktable, see if we get a different amount of detail. Yeah, see, the colors are slightly different there. There's a little bit more detail available in, the, in this raw file than in the JPEG. Um, but that's actually changeable through the settings files. Uh, you can uh, tell it to use not to use the embedded preview JPEG but to use a half size RAW. This uses significantly more CPU though to just after you Im uh, import the, the photos. So I don't do that I just uh, you know these are good enough for me to tell whether an image is good enough for me to go ahead and process generally speaking. And if not you can just jump into the dark table view. So so I you know, go through my images and I select the ones that I want to process. Let's say you know, I like this one, I'm going to give that two stars. I just clicked on the star here, or I can press number two on the keyboard. I like that image. Uh, 
what else do I want to process? Uh, yeah, no, not really. These I'm going to use as backgrounds for some other stuff. Uh, this is the orchard. Oh, I like that photo from the orchard. I like this one too because of the light, you know, it's bright light on the uh, on the apple and and dark background. Uh, these are the blackberries that are beginning to come out. Now let's see. I was going to process one of these. Again, I'm using the scroll wheel to skip forwards. Yeah, let's let's do this one. I like that. This one's not in focus at the beginning. Back here, it's sort of back focused a bit. This one's uh, borderline. Yeah, it's, this is out of focus here, so that's, that's a reject. And here's a bumblebee. Checking out. There's the one that I like. I like this one with the uh, <laughs> with the little uh, lady ladybird and the bee there. So I'm going to select that one. I uh, quite like this one too, so I might select that one too. And this one. Look at that. This is beautifully and sharp, and this is nice and soft, so I like that, that image there. Okay, so... <laughs> these kids were funny. They were selling cake at a store. It's uh, school holidays here at the moment. Anyway, okay, so I've selected the images that I want to process now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to view only those images that have two stars or more. So this filters my uh, light table view down to just the good images. And I'm going to edit this one. Okay, so let's switch to the histogram view that I like, the linear one, uh, now. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of work out what a crop I like. Um, I'm not a fan of people who try and, you know, oh, I must fill the frame. I think that's, uh, you know, artificially limiting. Um, often you don't want the uh, the same aspect ratio. Um, often your lens won't focus close enough. Uh, you know, there's a whole host of reasons why you might want to use a crop. In this case, I'm not using a macro lens. This is as close as I could get a um, without the butterfly being scared away by me uh, and B, you know, there's a pretty limited um, focus distance on this lens. It's about 50 centimeters, I think, 45 centimeters or something like that. So I'm going to crop it down. Now I'm going to use a standard aspect ratio, 7 to 5, something like that. This is, you know, an old old style monitor kind of aspect ratio and I want to crop out this distracting element here in the in the background. So I'm just going to bring it in just inside that and then I'm going to sort of bring it in tight and I'm going to be um, putting this on that rule of thirds line there. Just, you know, good composition. So that's cool. I'm happy with that. Uh, it seems a bit tight now actually so I'm just going to See if I can get that a bit looser on the on the butterfly without get, again getting this distracting element in. Cool. I really like that. Uh, except it's now we're too far. Okay, I won't spend too much time on this, but you get the idea. You sort of fiddle with it until you get you know until it feels right. Um, which to me that feels that feels right now. Okay, so the next question is, what's the exposure doing? Um, as you can see, I would say that the exposure is, uh, you know, stopping about here. The values are stopping about here. So there's probably what two thirds of a stop. These are two thirds of a stop available um, to increase the exposure. Let's go just and add. I'm using the mouse wheel to move these values, and I'm just watching this histogram um, and just checking that I'm not going to crop anything. So I've already added two thirds of a stop there. I'm going to boost that up a bit. I'm going to turn this uh, over underexposed indicator on. See, I don't have any anything over underexposed, red or blue. So I'm just going to keep pushing this exposure. So clearly, when I took this shot, I should have uh, exposed it better. But it was probably, as we saw before, it was zoomed out much further. So the metering was probably on the background and not on this particular element. So you know, obviously, the camera doesn't can't read your mind, it doesn't know exactly what the result's going to be. Hell, half the time I, t I shoot something, I don't know exactly what the composition's going to be either. This is the nice thing about RAW. We can push this and not lose, you know, not posterize our shot. JPEGs simply don't have enough information for that. 
Okay, so uh, now I'm going to push the blacks up. Again, I'm looking at this. Um, obviously, there's a lot of dark blues in, an Im in this image, but I'm going to push that up. See, I'm starting to clip down here. So really, it's just a matter of taste. But you can see immediately that I start pushing these blacks, the colors become richer. And that's what I'm going for. Obviously, that's well way too much. I'm going to just push it so that I lose a tiny bit of detail in these really dark blacks, which I don't mind about. Cool. So the next question I have is, is this white balance correct? I'm looking at this, and I want this, I think, to be a neutral white. And I'm seeing a bit of a blue cast in this, so I'm a bit skeptical that it's correct. So I'm going to try my spot white balance on here. Obviously, by default, the spot white balance uses the entire image, which is almost never right. But, and look at this, we're, we're actually overexposing this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a white area of this, of this wing for my spot white balance. What the hell is going on? Okay, I've worked out what was going on there. Uh, there's a bug in the spot white balance module at the moment. So I can show you what that is quick, quite quickly. If I enable crop and apply it, and then I choose spot white balance. Look, no white balance change. If I disable the crop, look, white balance change. Okay. Spot white balance, let's select, look, beautiful, beautiful yellows and, you know, it feels really warm and gorgeous. So I will be submitting a bug report for that tomorrow, but in the meantime, let's go on with our edit. So I've now got my white balance dialed in. I'm going to turn the, the uh, crop back to how it was before. Um, I've thrown away all my edits in the process of... Um, finding that bug so let's just go reapply those edits okay so I think I'm back to something like we had before with our exposure and our crop and our white balance so now I'm gonna go over to well basically I mean this is starting to be become a nice image um, right now I'm almost satisfied with it but I'd like a bit more pop from the center of attention of the image which is this butterfly so to do that I'm going to use the um, the local contrast module, and as you can see, if I turn that on, it increases the overall uh, contrast of the image, and it does that in a local manner. So it's kind of related to an HDR technique where you increase contrast locally, but it's not necessarily true across the whole image. That's just my understanding. It may not be completely correct. However. I really don't like the effect that this has on this bokeh in the background. Um, I think it, it, it has, you know, makes makes the bokeh look harsh and horrible. So what I want to do is I want to restrict the sharpness just to the uh, area where we see the, uh, the butterfly. So to do that I'm going to use a mask, a drawn mask. So uh, this is the new mask system that's currently under development in uh, the latest version of Darktable and this is really new stuff so it's probably subject to change but uh, these paths and uh, the the circle tool are and I think um, the gradients are present in version 1.2 and we've got a couple of new things we've got an ellipse and we have a brush these are new for for 1.3 and will I assume be stabilized by the the time 1.4 comes out. So anyway, let's use a, uh, a path. This is, like I said, it's available in Darktable 1.2. So it's available now for anybody who wants to stay on the stable version but wants to use masks. So I've clicked, just using the left mouse button, I've clicked around to create my, um, my shape. You can see that it's smooth and it's actually really easy to draw nice smooth shapes by doing that. Now I don't want this last point, so I'm going to right click and that finishes off the shape. Notice how immediately the background goes back into that beautiful buttery, um, blurry bokeh that I like. Um, but I'm going to turn off the warnings here and you can see that the, if I turn this off and on, you can see the difference that is going on on the, on the center of attention, which is the butterfly. Back on, 
and I don't really want the background to be blurred quite so much so I'm going to reduce the size of this element just by using the, the mouse wheel until you know until I just like it just by eye now the other thing is uh, I'm not currently sharpening the legs or the antennae so I'm going to use this cool new feature which is the brush so I'm going to draw over this antennae like this let's just sort this out a little bit just zoom in while I'm doing it just so I can get this a bit more do this a bit more easily Okay, so you can see the sharpening that's going on there. I'm pressing the red line around the outside, and I want to include the legs as well. But I think I don't think I'll use a brush for that. I think I'll just uh, do another uh, path. I mean, you know, this is completely just up to the way you want to do things. But I just want to get these legs to be part of it. Something like that and right. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, I think that's all right. So I'm going to click on this button here, which uh, shows or hides the various elements. And I'm going to look at my image and think, that's all right. I think this is getting quite quite close to what, what I'd like. Um, the only two more things that I want to do, well, probably three more things. I want to deal with this noise that we're getting. Um, because this is quite heavily cropped, even though it was shot at ISO 100, the noise is, is still visible because it's cropped in so so tightly. Uh, so let's go over to the... Uh, okay, it's not shown, so let's go down to our denoise profile. Just turn that on. See how nice and smooth that's now getting. I'm happy with the defaults there. Now... Um, what else was I going to do? I kind of want to make the colors a bit brighter, so I think what I'm going to do, oh, you can see I've done this before. Okay, let me go back to the start. Okay, so I'm going to, yeah, so I want my bright my colors to be bright. There's a few different modules that you can use for this. There's Velvia, which, is, which kind of tries to emulate an old school Velvia film. Um, which is what I'm going to use now, but there's also Vibrance and uh, there's also uh, Saturation here. So, you know, you can, you know, whatever you like to use, you can use. Um, I personally, in this case, want to use Velvia, so I'm going to use quite a strong Velvia. And I'm also going to reduce this midtone bias, because if you have the midtone bias at one, then the Velvia effect only affects the midtones in the image, but I want to affect pretty much the whole image, so I'm just going to pull that back, and you can see that it affects more of the image the more you, you reduce this midtone bias. So I probably mark mine oh, somewhere around there, nice and bright, and with Velvia you can do some pretty impressive things with more than one instance of it seems to just result in a brighter image. I mean, you've got to kind of watch out for these fringes that are around here, which are, I don't like the way that they look um, a little bit artificial with these color fringes around the pedals here. So maybe in this case, I'll turn this off. Yeah, the color fringes are a bit less obvious now. I think that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. But again, you know, I don't know about you, but my photography can use all the enhancement it can get. So I'm going to add a, add a vignette as well. Just to, again, to draw the attention to the center of the uh, of what I want to be the center of attention, which is this uh, butterfly. So I'm using control again to zoom out. Control and uh, mouse wheel to zoom out. And what actually, I mean, you can actually scroll in and out with the mouse wheel without pressing control as well. But the difference is, I've now zoomed out to my full extent with the mouse wheel. Um, and if I press control, that changes the, um, the constraints on that. So I can zoom further out than the image. I think it's basically until the image is, is only 50% horizontally or 50% vertically, something like that. And that enables me now to, to grab these handles on the um, vignette tool. And, you know, vignette the image. Now, my the way I do vignettes basically is I don't want it to be obvious that there is a vignette. 
Um, so this is way too strong. Uh, I see a lot of images online which just, you know, you, you see these characteristic dark corners and they're just way too dark. Really, you shouldn't be able to tell, this is my opinion of course, you shouldn't be able to tell that a vignette has been used at all. So I'm going to increase this falloff strength. Immediately you'll see that, you know, it's much less obvious already. Um, and I'm probably just going to boost the size of this. And so basically the full effect of the vignette has taken place outside this line, then there's a, a linear gradient until you hit this inner line and the image is fully bright within that circle. So uh, I also personally don't like to pull the saturation out, so I I right clicked on that to get this uh, to get this which you can use to, to do fine tuning rather than using the scroll wheel on this um, on this slider. And the cool thing is if you right click on this and type you can set a value to be whatever you want. So let, let's say I want it to be zero, which in, my, in this case I want it to be, and then I just hit enter, that applies that. So the saturation is not coming off towards the edge here. But I also don't want the brightness to be quite so strong, so I'm just going to use the mouse wheel to reduce that a little bit. So, you know, minus, two six, minus 0 0.260, sure, looks pretty good. I'm going to close that off to hide the vignette, and you can see that that vignette's not obvious, but it is there, and it's helping to draw your attention towards the left side of the side of this image. I actually think that this color here is a little bit bright, so I might just pull the vignette to the right a little bit um, and reduce its scale and so forth to bring it back to sort of how it was before, but leave this a little bit dimmer. Again, and I'm going to keep saying it, this is all personal taste and personal preference. So I'm going to now just go back to 100% no, sorry, fit to screen. And to press tab on image. I'm pretty happy with that. So, back to the light table we go. Click on the image we want to export. Export selected. Again, all my settings have been lost. Okay, I'm back. I've fixed up my uh, export selected. Uh, put the settings back that I wanted. And I'm going to click export. We're exporting. Okay, we're done. Let's go back out of here. Here is our image. Thanks for watching.